The real conflict for me is the conflict between those who care and those who don't. Maomi Elizabeth was in her tent in a refugee camp. She was in there with her husband and her four-year-old daughter. Other four children were outside playing and she could hear them playing. And suddenly the noise stopped. A knife came through the ceiling of her tent and ripped it open. And in stepped four men. Her husband ran out the front of the tent. They put a gun to her child's head and then took turns raping Mombi. And as they left, they set the tent on fire. Neighbors came and were able to save Mombi, but her little daughter died. The last thing that little kid saw was her mother being raped. The world is a brutally unfair place. And I think that, that sense of moral outrage has driven much of my work. My ideal voice in my photography is actually not my own, but my subjects. As much as possible, I would like their voices heard. <laughs> I see myself as an intermediary between people who have been denied their human rights and an audience who I think have the power to stand up and try and make change happen. When war brings chaos, it also often brings sexual violence. In 2008, I saw an article that uh, mentioned the numbers of women and children that had been raped in the conflict in Congo. It was in the hundreds of thousands. I couldn't believe that I hadn't heard about this before. I arrived at a hospital and the first woman that I met recognized her rapist and so he cut out her eyes. Within two minutes, I was starting to think, how do I tell her story? I met many women who were still suffering from the physical effect of the rape. But I also met many who, uh, where the physical scars had healed, but the psychological scars remain. I think that many of them carry a, a deep, deep shame, and they carry that pain within them for the rest of their lives. I spent a year doing mental health work, then I did four months in Zimbabwe, the last month of which was in prison, over and over and over again, these people with these horrendous experiences. In the Congo, many, many women that I met, their mothers were raped and their daughters were raped. Everywhere we'd go, there's another one, and then there's another one, and there's another one. It was just relentless. By the end of that period, I really um, felt like I needed to step away, I was struggling to have that real empathy because it had just become too much. It was walking away uh, every time, walk, documenting and walking away, knowing that the little kid that I photographed in the refugee camp in the dub is still there, that the man I photographed in a prison in South Sudan, he's still chained to the floor of that prison. And the people who I have walked away from. They were just still there. To the detriment of, I think, every other aspect of my life, it's very clear about why I'm getting up every morning and packing my bag and getting on that plane and doing that stuff. You know, we've all got stuff to deal with in our daily lives. We're consumed with our, with our problems. So you don't want to take on somebody else's, right? 
My job is making it so that ignorance cannot be used as an alibi for an action. What I hope a photograph can do is that people can see the person and they can see their brother, their sister, their, their, their child in that photo. I want to make them witnesses because I believe that with witnessing comes responsibility and to witness uh, suffering and um, not take action makes one complicit in that suffering. And I think that we're all complicit Bringing light into the shadows of their lives is an, is an aspiration. I don't think I'm there yet. But I think it's something that I have to pursue. My name is Robin Hammond, and this is Conflict.